This is gonna be another ink swirl tutorial. I got some inks the other day. It's called Ice Resin. I've never heard of this. It's intended to be used for, according to this, the molds, I believe resin, uh, which is what we're working with, the epoxy resin, um, but to get a more gemstone look. But I got two packs. I got three two packs for $1.99 a piece. I could not pass that up. It was worth giving it a shot. Worst case, I spent eight bucks and that's not the end of the world. So I did a little dot on here so that I could get an idea of what it is. But again, that's on paper. On this, I have no idea what it's going to look like. It may look terrible and this may end up being the base to a different kind of cup, which I've done that plenty of times where I completely failed at what I was attempting. And so I had to cover it up with something else. I have glitter all over my hands from moving this mat around. It's dirty from yesterday's video. So I'm going to add in what's called fairy dust. It is super duper duper fine, almost powdery. Kind of holographic, but it's going to give my cup some sparkle. And we're going to add that in the base layer of epoxy and see what happens. It may look great, it may not, I'm not sure. So of all the six colors, I'm not gonna use these two. I don't feel like they really flow as well with the colors of the others. And I grabbed all three packages that they had that were different, they had duplicates of some. So I'm gonna do Ruby, and Yaru, and Hacienda, and Lowlight. This to me looks a lot like the indigo of the other one. So I'm gonna mix up, I'm gonna go ahead and mix 30 milliliters of epoxy just because I wanna be able to get lots of coverage. This is a 30 ounce skinny. So I gotta make sure that I have plenty, which normally if you're using the epoxy method to glitter, you want as thin as possible. That is not so with the other um, methods with the ink swirls where you're dropping it on there and all that good stuff. So tighten that up a bit. So I'm gonna get that mixed up and then we'll get started. Okay, so I have this mixed up. You can see I have air bubbles in there. Again, like I've mentioned in other videos, for what I'm doing on here, I don't care. It's about to get uh, completely manipulated. So those air bubbles will pop just with the movement that we're gonna get. And so I'm going to go ahead and add in the pixie dust, or the fairy dust. There is such thing as too much of this. If you add too much, it will get so intense that it, you just don't get the effect that you want. So I'm just going to put maybe, I don't know, that's probably like a quarter teaspoon or so. I made the mistake of going a little heavy handed once and I had to make another batch of epoxy to dilute it. It was that bad. So you can kind of see here, I don't know if you can see the iridescent of it. I'm gonna stir it up really good. I actually probably put a little bit too much in here. It's a little goes a long way kind of thing, but it's gonna look great once we get the inks on there. So that is what we've got going there. Again, when you're mixing your epoxy, make sure you don't have any of those little stringy things. You, um, you wanna mix it thoroughly before you add in any, anything like what I just added. And again, that was Fairy Dust from France. So, just like on the last one, we're going to go kind of on a thinner side. I like to go a little thin for my very first couple of turns, just so that I can control it. And then I'll put it on much thicker in a minute. But I want to make sure and get all the way to the rim and cover it completely because we got to watch for dry spots.
If you pour too much, it will end up on your surface underneath. So make sure you're working with something underneath there. Silicone mat is kind of nice. It is easy to just pick off the epoxy. It's easy to kind of roll it up and go shake it out. I hosed mine down with a water hose yesterday. If you can see how much I've got going on there. Not too thick right this minute. I'm going to just kind of work it in there. Again, I'm going to go back and add... I'm going to add it thicker in just a minute. I just... I don't know. I've just kind of burned a couple of times not making sure that I had it nice and thoroughly covered before. Before getting the thicker parts and it just have some dry spots like right here that's repelling probably because dang I keep dripping this stuff everywhere um probably because I handled it with my bare hands and the oils from your hands can cause that um again make sure you are not wearing really good clothes because sometimes the inks will bounce uh, that happened on one of the last videos. It didn't really record well because it was an aerial view, but it happened. And of course, once again, I'm not following that advice because I have my absolute favorite sweatshirt on. I'm 40 years old and I literally bought this sweatshirt at a minor league baseball game in 1996. Maybe 1997. Depends on what part of the season it was in. But I paid $10 for this thing on clearance from their little merch stand. And oh my gosh, it has seen two pregnancies, high school graduation, moving off after that, moving back home, moving away after marriage, all that stuff. Obviously not in that order because I just kind of bounced all over my timeline there. So I've got a complete coverage here. All right, so we're going to just kind of take a minute and do this. I don't want to string it on too thick because then the globs will just fall right on to the mat and that completely defeats the whole purpose of having it on here nice and thick. Don't forget to give your uh, the bottom some love because that's going to need to be able to have movement as well. there and it's pretty cold in here so I think I'm going to move my shop light after I get this on here I'm going to move my shop light and see how it does because it'll give warmth and allow this to move really well but it may be obnoxiously bright so stay tuned we may have to do that this isn't nearly as runny as I want it to be for what we're going to be doing and I think that will help a lot so I'm just going to Spread this out kind of smoothly. And then we're gonna let it turn for a minute. Got one big glitter there. We're gonna let it turn for a minute and kind of level out naturally. It's a nice thing about resin is it kind of self levels for the most part. If your turner is off, you'll end up with a lump there or there. If it stops in the middle of the night, you end up with a giant lump wherever the bottom ends up being. And let me tell you, that's a huge pain in the butt to have to Dremel off. But it's a necessary evil if you don't want to completely restart a cup. So I'm going to let that turn for a minute and uh, kind of clean up my mess. See how the shop light works out. Okay, so it's been turning just a couple minutes. Shop light, total fail. It made the image so ridiculously ugly. So anyways... We're going to just continue while my turner decides to scream and screech. I'm going to start with the low light. Low light. I don't know what this is called, but let's see what that looks like. Nope. Actually, I see a spot where the epoxy is not all the way up. We have that. It is going to have like a weird bald spot, so to speak. Um, one thing that will help you with your end uh, cleanup 
try not to scrape your finger that way because it will literally like squeegee the epoxy into the rim of the cup. I see people commenting all the time. How do I clean up the rim? How do I prevent this from happening? You just have to go slow and be mindful of what you're doing um, when you're doing it because otherwise it will just look like a hot mess that you have to clean up. So I'm putting on fresh gloves since I got epoxy all over that other set and I really don't want epoxy all over my new little bottles of whatever this stuff is. So we're about to find out together what this looks like. So again, I'm using whatever this is called and I'm just going to go kind of all over. It definitely seems a little bit definitely paler I'm sure oops <laughs> I squirted it I'm um, I'm sure that's why it's called ice resin is because it's pretty translucent it's pretty though don't forget the bottom give it a little attention there so that's what I'm gonna do for this green let's go ahead and do some blue I grabbed my white just in case it seemed like it was too I don't know, in case it seemed like it needed a little bit of dimension there. We're going to find out together. I kind of like how clear it is, especially on that white base. I didn't say earlier, that was just a spray painted base. I'm pretty sure that was a flat white versus the gloss that I typically prefer. Every once in a while when I go get groceries and I need to grab spray paint uh, they don't have what I want and that is just not acceptable so since they don't bend to my will I can't really say much okay so that was Hacienda I like how clear it is nice and pale so now we are doing raw ruby And it's okay to kind of stack them like that because that green one kind of, that was one of the ones that accidentally literally squirted <laughs> the ink out of the bottle. I'm kind of paranoid that I'm going to squirt it again, but that's okay. Kind of address any spots that don't have any color. got that and now we're gonna do this last one which is the yellow yarrow yarrow whatever that means if somebody knows what that means please enlighten me I see a little crackly effect on here I don't know if that's a good sign because it's gonna turn out looking cool or if that's a bad sign that this oops I hit the bot the cup uh, or if that is a bad sign that this is gonna be a fail I predict lots of green in my future because I was not thinking that yellow and blue totally make green and I'm about to have some orange in here too. I guess that's a good problem. It prevents me from having to have quite so many colors. I don't know. I guess if I was making this for someone in particular that either hated yellow or orange, that might be a problem. But this has no end user in mind because... I'm just trying to prep, good grief, that came out fast. I'm trying to prep for craft show and I just got a space at a, a vendor mall slash antique store, whatever it is. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add just a teeny bit of white in the mix just to kind of see what it ends up looking like. I'm almost out of this, so I've already been searching on Amazon. I could not believe that Hobby Lobby does not have white or black inks. I'm just doing a few drops kind of throughout, sporadic. Kind of want to be able to see if it makes any of those little wavy things like in the other tutorials. 
We'll see. I don't want to go too heavy handed, but it kind of makes it pop pretty good having that on there. Okay, so that's all the white I'm going to do. I'm about to get real obnoxious and hit this with a heat gun. Normally, I would want to have my mask on. But I cannot talk with that mask on and do this at the same time. That wouldn't quite work out. Okay, so I've kind of tinkered with doing this in the past and liked how it turned out. Kind of broke up the white and made it a little bit more um, stringy looking. Yeah, that's, ah, good gravy, it came out fast again. This thing has a mind of its own, so if you try some of these uh, ice resins, beware. It's probably gonna go crazy on you. I actually want just a teensy bit more on this bald spot right there. If you want it to slide this way, um, drop it on this side of the cup. If you want it to slide the other way, drop it like right on the edge and it'll just drop right down. So I don't know if you can see the sparkle kind of peekabooing through. I don't think you can on the video. Maybe a little bit. It's a lot more visible in person. But I'm going to hit it with the heat gun really quickly. Since my epoxy is not runny enough for me to manipulate like I normally would want to, it's easier to do what I want to accomplish movement-wise by heating it up this way. If it was hot in here or if my shop light idea was going to work, then that would have been nice, but not today. It's literally 50-something degrees outside. And since my shed is very lightly insulated, that's what it is inside. And I don't really care to blow a fuse right now. So I'm taking this off of here and we are going to just manipulate it. Let it slide. It's kind of hard to see the movement because I have to hold it at such a weird angle, but I am manipulating it so that we get this kind of movement. Uh, there is that other person that created what's called the Alicia method just because I think she was the first to really do it and share the technique. But she drops her whites this way so that it's not a blob, it's a line. And that is just sliding right down the edge of the cup. Can't really show you because it's not staying there, but it will slide off the end. I just got it on my hand just from touching the rim a little bit, but kind of moving it a lot like a little moving it around like that. I wish you could see the sparkle. It's pretty cool looking. I wish that that didn't break up like that, but I guess in a way it's going to be kind of cool in its own right. Got some cool little waves right there. Those will not look like that later. I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up just a little bit more. So I'm not really getting a ton of movement, which that's fine. There is the possibility of us adding another layer of epoxy tomorrow and doing this all again. But, I mean, it's still pretty cool looking. Not bad for sure. I'm going to do a little bit more green. The yellow is pretty, but I do feel like it kind of takes over when it starts mixing in with other colors. So we're going to do that. Careful not to hold it one direction too much because, good grief, that one has a mind of its own. This is the same one that's been shooting out of here like a BB gun or something. Um, if you're holding it one direction for too long, it will 
fall off whatever the bottom most part of the cup is. I'm just gonna kind of continue to manipulate it. I know this is gonna go in and out of focus because I think I'm moving faster than what my phone can keep up with. That's all right. I'm gonna open the white and put a little bit more white in here. I really like when it ends up with that kind of galaxy effect. I almost feel like there's no such thing as too much of this, but there probably is. I'm sure at some point I would hit my capacity of what I could tolerate and still like what it uh, ended up looking like. Another nice thing about having the glitter either in your top coat or your base coat, either one, is those bald spots, they don't really look bald. They just look like maybe white spots or pale spots or something like that. So I'm just holding it up and down for a minute. And I just got epoxy on my favorite sweatshirt. I knew that was gonna happen. It's because of this, it was on my hand. I pushed my sleeve up. Grr. Okay, so since I just added those new white spots, I'm going to hit it again. And again, Normally, I would have my mask on. I have had some reactions to the epoxy. My eyelids get crusty and flaky and itchy. and I can tell when I have been doing this without a mask on because my nose itches like crazy for hours afterwards. So, I've just got that kind of swirled around. I love that. It won't be there later though. It's not gonna stay. So I'm gonna put this back on the turner. Let's give you a little bit of color there. I'm gonna put this back on the turner, kind of let it do its thing. Probably hit it with a little bit more heat to get a little bit more horizontal movement. It's not ugly, just different. It's not as pretty as the other one as far as vibrancy goes and you definitely have more of that breakup effect which I mean it's cool but not really what I was hoping for but not bad just different so anyways I'm gonna hit this with a little bit more heat give it some more vertical movement this way um, and then we'll see what it looks like in the morning I'm gonna set the timer I'm paranoid so I don't want anything sitting overnight anymore now that I have my timers I don't like anything turning when I'm not in here for more than just a couple of hours. I've seen what happens to Cheryl, she should. I had to get at least one lame joke in there. So anyways, we will see what this looks like in the morning. <laughs> I just got a little heat gun happy. So now it's finally moving like I wanted it to. Keep in mind, if you get too close to your epoxy, with your heat source, whether it's a torch or an embossing gun, some people use a blow dryer successfully, you can scorch your epoxy and it will cure all kinds of wrong and lumpy. I'm pretty certain that that's where the waves come from when you have a layer. Wow, that's really pretty right there. When you have a layer that um, drives really wavy I'm pretty certain that that's one of the leading culprits. Okay, so I'm not hating this very much. <laughs> I'm kind of digging it. I'm just tilting it more and more. I'm trying to get rid of these little broken up spots. Um, I don't know what those are, how hard it's going to be, but good grief, that looks like a watercolor, man. That is so pretty. I'm liking it. So... Anyways, we will see what this looks like in the morning. I do have another video.
Can you tell I'm paranoid? Every once in a while I'll stick my hand underneath. I'm paranoid it's going to slide off of my thing here because I just have it. I have shelf liner. Whoa! Let's go ahead and drop you back on there. Um, I have shelf liner on there so that it gives it a better grip and grab, especially if you start kind of shaking like that, which I've done that a few times and made quite the mess. But that's really pretty. It's a little bit more intense on this side than it is on this side. That's what makes it unique. Don't be too afraid to make it different. There's no rule saying that they have to be uniform. In fact, we'd all be screwed if they did have to be uniform because there's no way to duplicate exact. That's another thing I've done plenty of times, just kind of dab it around if you've got too many bald spots. Just kind of dab it. It also helps blend the colors just a teeny bit. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not going to do it up here because this swirl is looking pretty good. I do have a cut. Maybe let's go ahead and dab right here. Just kind of dab, dab, dab. Just kind of see if we can't break that up just a bit. But I have a cup that I did that it did not turn out like I was planning. So I ended up, after it was, it ended up with a bunch of dry spots. Like the base coat of the cup for some reason was exposed. And I just went over it after it had thickened up a good bit. And I just went over the almost the whole thing and just dabbed it. And then I put a top coat with glitter in it. It turned out pretty cool. That's right here. That and that, that, all of that is caused for me. Tap, 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 tap. Just kind of throughout, like that was a complete bald spot. But it kind of looks like a little nebula doohickey. <laughs> I'm not very into science, but I mean, that looks pretty sweet. It's so much prettier in person than on screen, but that's what that kind of effect will give. You can kind of see it. Uh, I'll wait for it to come back around since it focused up high. Right in here. That's what that dabbing will do. Let's go ahead and just continue. Let's just fix that spot and just see what happens. Kind of, just kind of make it your own. There, that broke up that weird little patchy spot. I don't really have any more of those spots throughout. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and take what's on this finger and put it right in the middle of this white spot that's about to come around just to kind of break that up. This does tend to work. That dabbing technique does tend to work. See how that made a pretty little swirl right there? Kind of bring that over a little, connect them. Um, that dabbing technique does tend to work better when it's thicker. Yeah, but that's all we're going to do for tonight, I promise. We're going to turn around and um, set the timer and leave it be for the next two hours and we'll see what it looks like either in the morning or I may not make it out here until tomorrow night. We'll see what the morning looks like because sometimes they're unpredictable. So have a good rest of your couple of minutes, moments until this video resumes. So I've literally been sitting here playing on my phone for about 10 minutes instead of going inside and getting ready for bed like I should. Um, so this is what it looks like right now after about 10 minutes. This spot that's about to come around right, where's my finger? <laughs> right there. <laughs> that's the spot I was dabbing earlier with my finger. Um, so it's got pretty decent movement. Hasn't really changed much since I stopped earlier. The bottom's not perfect, but it's gonna turn out pretty great.
I'll see what it looks like in the morning. So here is the end result. It turned all night. And it looks pretty similar to what we left it at, but you can see the glitter in there. In the light, it's really gonna make a big difference in having that glitter underneath that layer, or in that layer. Uh, it's really pretty in person. The camera colors, they just, they kind of dull it down a bit. There are some pinks like right in there where the white was on the red. It's really pretty. I don't know if I'll use those particular inks again, but they're not terrible. Most of the red is now orange. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but this is that spot that we were dabbing. It's pretty much orange. But that's okay. It's still pretty. That's it. I'll put a I'll put a layer of epoxy, maybe a generic decal, and then I'll be ready to go. If you have any comments, drop them and I'll try and answer them.